thanks for coming, everybody. It's nice to see everybody. So we're going to give a little class, not too long. Uh, and then if you want to ask any questions, uh, Jack will be happy to answer. <laughs> I was joking, Jack. <laughs> He's supposed to be a cameraman, but he just, he just fired him right now. Okay. Uh, so we're going to discuss about uh, connecting to Hashem through tefillah. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to give you the regular uh, things about tefillah, how important it is, and it's, it's been around for thousands of years, and, or explanation of tefillah, you know, the way it's brought down in Shmone Eske, and personal tefillah that we have, and what happens, but rather on a deeper level, okay? Because the, the more obvious things you can read about, the less obvious things you'll, you'll need somebody to explain to you, okay? So, I want to explain to you as well on a scientific basis. We have any scientists over here? Yeah. Quantum physics? Yeah. Any quantum <laughs> physicists? <laughs> None. Okay. So, I'm going to have to explain to you a little bit about quantum physics as well. Okay. And why I think it's important because uh, some people say, oh, that's science and this has nothing to do with religion. But you'll be surprised at the connection that we have between science and how that will better understand, or better understand religion. Mm -hmm. Or in this particular case, we're taking the subject of tefillah. Okay? Okay, the door's there. Anybody wants to leave now, they can leave now. Mm -hmm. If not, we're locking it. So you're going to have to sit. Can No. <laughs> no. Okay. So this is, this is the story. I mean, this is the story. Okay. I'm going to explain to you a scientific, a scientific experiment that is very famous is called the double slit experiment. Anybody, anybody heard of it? Anybody heard of this? No. So it's a very, very simple experiment. Okay. So what it is is they took a beam of light, okay, and they shone it through a a partition which had two slits in it. Okay. So the light went beaming and then went through this slit and that slit and hit the back of the wall, mm -hmm. okay? So what do you expect? If I were to put my hand here, okay, there's no, if I had a, a strong light, you'd see a shadow, you'd see two, two lines over here on the wall. Does that make sense? Yes. Everybody if so far with happened, me? It was the whole thing? Sorry? If that would happen, it was all of the light? One second, one second. Don't jump the gun, <laughs> don't jump the gun. Okay, so they repeated the, the exercise a second time and then they, they found that there wasn't two slits, it was five slits. Very strange, because the, the, see, the light could only travel through the two different slits. So they, real, they were really puzzled what happened between this time and that, that time. And what they discovered was, is that every time one of the scientists would go and observe the experiments, the results would change. So when nobody was in the room, they just put the light in there and just come back a few hours later to see on a photographic piece of paper which is on the wall, what were the result? They'd see two slits as you, you would expect. But when the scientists were in the room to see exactly which slit it would go through, it would start splitting into five different parts. Five different slits. So, they deduced from there very simply that the, fa the pure fact of observing, observing the, the, the experiment, it changed the results. It's a famous, it's been done since 1805. Somebody, by, somebody called Thomas Young started it. A hundred years later on, it was reproduced by Albert Einstein, and it's been done by the greatest minds in the world, trying to figure out what is going on. Now, the goal of this was to find what is the nature of light? And I'll, we'll see how this comes to tefillah in a minute, okay? So, they had a theory, a very interesting theory, called the multi-universe theory, or the multi-world theory. Okay, that we're not going to go into. It's very fascinating, but I'm not going to, we'll be speak about that some other time. Okay, because we believe as Jews, there are multiple worlds, multiple spiritual worlds. But scientists also believe in this concept, in a way. But I want to propose to you my pshat, okay? My, the way I understand it, okay? And I think it's quite simple how to explain 
the difference between the two slits, the, the light going in, and the way it changes to five when you bring an observer to watch it. That's very simple. We know what sound waves are, is that correct? What, what are sound waves? Sound waves... Energy that carries sound. Energy that carries sound. Anybody else? Energy. Okay. So, okay. So the whales communicate in the sea. It carries different movement patterns and then translates to sound in the ear. Frequencies. Yeah, frequencies. Okay. So I want to call it vibrations. A vibration. So, for example, if somebody to speak, you send out vibrations. Okay. So on a physical basis, if you put your hand next to your mouth as you're speaking, you'll find that there's wind being created. There's a vibratory factor on the level of wind, okay, the atmosphere, but there's also waves are produced. We have radio waves, we have internet waves, we have infrared waves, gamma rays, we have microwaves, we have radiation waves, we have a whole spectrum of waves, waves that travel that, that are not seeable, but we know it works. When you turn on your radio, how do you think it works? Because there are invisible the invisible eye, to the eye, it's invisible, but these waves catch the antenna and then make a noise through this, what we call the radio, okay? These are waves, so we have sound waves as well. Like Jack just said, the whales will communicate through making waves, sound waves, okay? What they do, they, the waves will hit the eardrum, which will hit, which will then work with the hairs in your ear, sending electrical impulses to your brain and your brain will hear what somebody else said so your ear doesn't hear your brain hears and it's what when you see when you see you don't see with your eye what it is it's a refraction of light that goes through your eye through the corona through to the retina the retina creates electrical impulses which goes to your brain so Truly, what we should see is, what we should say is not, you don't see with your eyes, you actually see with your brain. You see with your wow. brains, okay? These are all, those are light waves. But you see with both of them, you can't, if you don't have eyes, you can't move just with them to see it. That's right. You need the physical retina, right, and the corona, in order for it to diminish light. There's a lot, it's a lot more, a lot more complicated than that, but so they you actually... you see with your brain, through your eyes. No, you don't actually see with your eyes. No, the you see with your brain. Your That's right. Your, your, br your brain gives you an image of what you're seeing. Okay, well, I don't want to go into that too deeply, but what we see from that is everything is vibrations. We call them vibes. Vibes, you know. So it sounds a little bit technical, but we know that concept, you know, sometimes when you're just sitting there and, and you feel that somebody's come in the room. Ever, ever anybody felt this before? Yeah. And then you look back and, oh, you know, I felt that was that. Or, or sometimes you, you feel that somebody's staring at you, and you look up and they are staring at you. How does that work? It's a sense. It's a it's sense. A vibration. Vibration. So what we're saying is that through the project projection of this wave, these sound waves, or this visual wave, it will come into your, what's called the electromagnetic field of yours, or the bio field, or some people call it the aura, and that will get you feelings, okay? And that's gonna send electrical impulses to your brain, and that makes you, and that creates this, um, this idea that somebody's look at you, or you feel, okay? Mm -hmm. So even though nobody's touching you. This is also found in Kabbalistic literature that Rav Chaim Vital, which is the, one of the greatest Kabbalists, he writes in his book, Otto Chaim, he writes an interesting thing. He talks about a, an ostrich, a special type of ostrich found, I'm not, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm not sure where, but this type of ostrich, he, he writes it in Hebrew, so we're not quite sure whether it's an ostrich or some other type of animal, but whatever the case is, is that this type of animal stares at its eggs. And by staring at its eggs, creates heat by the staring, and that nurtures the eggs for them to grow. It's not even physically possible. So he says it's not a physical thing, it's a spiritual thing. That for every physical sight that we see, that we explain, even though it's waves, we can't see them, but they're really physical waves, they're actually there. 
there's also a spiritual power behind them that actually gives that momentum. And he says, through this power of, of spiritual seeing, gives power to the physical seeing, which then creates this heat. Okay, so, so you see all these metaphysical things, really, that science are showing us, it's in, it's our, it's in our Kabbalistic uh, literature. Okay, so therefore, let's get back to our question over here. This, sci this uh, scientific conundrum. And the question was, so why is it that when you place a beam of light mm -hmm. through this partition, two partitions, not one partition with two slits, you'll see two lines here, and sometimes when the observer comes, you'll see five lines. Can anybody give me the answer according to what we just said now? It's sending extra waves of light, extra vibrations of light. That's right. That means what? The observer is interfering with the results of the experiment. What the observer is doing, he by looking, he's interfering with the light which is coming through the two partitions, and what they call the interference pattern. There's an interference going over there, which is mixing up these light protons and photons, which is giving an interference pattern on the wall. Is that what they came up? That's the result? That's, that's, my, that's my, what I'm saying. Okay. okay, based on what we see over here. In fact, an observer, and I proved it to you, an observer can, can um, manipulate energy. Mm -hmm. Okay, either he can manipulate Energy by his speaking, create waves, and then creating a sound in your ear that goes up to your brain. Or you can do it by looking, okay? You can see that by, by seeing as well, it has a power to nurture eggs. Mm -hmm. as a power, it's a power. It's a, the, the Rav Chaim Vital, the Kabbalist, he says, it's the power of seeing. He calls it the power of hearing. Okay, so it's, you own a power. Like if you were to stare at somebody, you make them very, very uncomfortable. Okay? So it's not only the fact of staring them and making them uncomfortable because you're looking at me, but rather there's something physical going on over there, creating vibrations which is making the person feel uncomfortable. Is that why eye contact is important? Of course, yes. That creates a bond, not only physically, but also spiritually. Okay. Eyes are the window into the soul. Mm. <laughs> and that's something else. <laughs> so, there's a book, so, book about that. Yeah, sure. But let's get back to our, our subject of tefillah. What does it have to do with tefillah? Okay. Is it that when you like talk, you're sending waves to God? Oh, oh is that interesting? So usually we learn tefillah is that don't ask questions how it works. What really happens is that you're just saying the words and that somehow magically will get you what you want. You know? In the 18 brachot we say in, in Shachrit, in Mincha, in Arvit, in Shmone Esre, we say, I want this, I want money, I want a shidduch, I want a uh, shilema, I want this, da, 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 and I hope it's going to happen. No, but when we first think them, when you first think Hashem, thank you for my eyes, thank you for my ears, thank you for my able to wake up, the, the removing of the bonds of sleep from my eyes, and this and that, da, 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 and then you ask. Because that's... Okay, so after you ask, exactly what are you doing by asking? Okay. I'll tell you what you're doing by asking you are sending out not only a plea for help, but, but more in a metaphysical way, what you're doing is that you're sending out your vibrations, your own innate vibrations, which changes the result of your future. Remember, think of the exercise, the experiment that we just saw over here. Just the fact that a scientist was able to come into the room and, 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 and just be in the room while the light is passing through this partition, he was able to manipulate that light. We know at the beginning of Chumash, it says, Vahi all. Vahi all. The Torah tells us that everything started out with light. The Kabbalists explain to us that everything is light. Everything. There's nothing but light. Your light, I'm light, this table's light. And if you don't believe me, take a very, very strong microscope and look into this table. It'll disappear in front of your eyes. I'm talking about a microscope a million times the power of your eye. You'll find there's nothing here. So they have, a, in science, they have theories called the particle theory, the wave theory, the string theory. But at the end of the day, 
this call this they call this manifestation from something physical to 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 spiritual the god particle so when you look into a very strong microscope you'll see that how this table just disintegrates within your within your field of vision but what's holding all these molecules together so they call that the god particle in their language that means we have no clue what it is but in our religion we believe that it's a shem keeping all these molecules intensely packed to give this illusion that it's a table illusion i don't mean that it doesn't exist it exists this table does exist but the illusion is is that it's it's solid but there is no solidity to anything it's really what it's in plain english it's solidified light anybody follow me yes, yes. even one person's good you follow me yeah okay good I two have no idea. Uh, three yeah all I the memorands the memorands are following me what I read it in your book. Oh, you read it in my book. Oh, you knew the answer. You <laughs> cheated. Okay, guys? This is what I'm saying. So, so like, connected with something, like, I've heard, like, for our Avarat Hashem, like, he, cre he formed light and created darkness. That's right. Yeah. But he was, he was manipulating light in order to create things. Everything comes out from light. Right? He all, and there was light. Okay? So, therefore, when we pray, okay, we're praying Ki'ilu to the light. I want this, I want that. I'm sending out, by the way, thoughts also create a vibrations and frequencies. So are you able to pray for somebody else when they're hurt? That's right. That's right. You're sending out, we say we're sending out our thoughts to the person, goodwill thoughts. But what you're really doing is that you're sending out these positive vibrations, and this positive atmosphere actually will give them the refush lema. Okay? Something. It's also why you shouldn't That's right. That's right. That's the whole uh, problem with Lashon Hara. Why is it so bad to say, that? what's wrong with a little bit of gossip? Nothing wrong. What's going to happen at the end? You'll never find out. But what's going to happen is that the vibrations, that negativity, will flow through time and space and affect that person. Do you understand? It's not the point where he finds out or not. It'll affect him. Okay? And rebound to you because you're the one, the recipient. Okay? Now let me tell you a fantastic experiment that was done by Dr. Moto Masugo. Okay, he did an incredible thing. What he did is he took he took a glass of water and said to the water, "I love you. I love water. It inspires me. It refreshes me. I just love water." And then froze it. Then took another glass of water and said, "I hate water. I prefer Coca Cola." And, and he said, oh, he disgusts me. And he put it and he froze it. Okay? An hour, once it was crystallized, you know what happens to water when you, when you freeze it? It becomes like crystals. He took a, sl a, a slit of, of that, of the, the glass, which, we, which he spoke positively, put it under the microscope, and he saw these beautiful crystals, like diamonds. And the other glass, which he spoke to, cursing it, it looked disoriented, it looked black, it looked like dirty water. And he repeated this, this over and over again just to make sure. And he had other scientists and researchers do the same thing. Everybody found the exact same thing. You know that a person is 85% water? Do you know what happens when you yell at somebody? Terrible. You crystallize their body into something either very negative or by praising them creating these beautiful crystals inside of that person. But we're talking about these crystals, we're talking about cells in a person's body. You know what cancer is? Cancer is, cancer is, is, is these cells which become <coughs> diseased by the fact that, this is not the only reason why, why, why cancer comes, but one of the reasons could be because you're affecting the person's cells, which are mainly out of water. Main, mainly you can also affect yourself. You can almost give yourself... For sure? You can talk to yourself into something, not only psychology, you know, with, with psychology, talk yourself into something bad, but also affect physical, your, the essence of who you are, okay, which is the majority of water, and then and see how that comes out, okay? Let me show you a quick little clip. It's five minutes.
Dr. Imato's laboratory does research on water samples which are subjected to various forms of outside influence. The impressions made upon the water are recorded by swiftly freezing it in a cryogenic chamber. This is what water heated in a microwave oven looks like. This is the effect of a mobile telephone. Somebody said, thank you to this water. Excuse me. You disgust me. Let us see how this type of water affects human blood. The doctor is drawing blood from a patient's finger. Using a special microscope, we shall be able to see the condition of her body from this drop. These are red blood cells, and they've lost their electrical charge, so they're all stuck together in a formation called a rouleau. Here's a huge symplast. Symplasts are associated with heart disease and uh, arthritis and lung disease and many other conditions that could be coming in the future. The doctor asks the patient to drink a small amount of structurized water. After 12 minutes, the doctor again draws blood from the patient and studies it. So you can see that the cells then become buoyant, they become slippery, and they have their electrical charge, so they repel each other. That allows them to carry oxygen, and it means that we're changing the pH of the blood back to an aerobic environment rather than an anaerobic environment. I think that's utterly amazing. That, that a water could, that just drinking water could do that. In 1995, Dr. Emoto Masaru was the first one to record musical impressions on water. In Dr. Emoto Masaru's laboratory, they allowed water to listen to music, after which they flash froze the water. And then, under the microscope, they could clearly see the crystals that the water had formed. Here is what the music of Bach looks like. Mozart. Beethoven. Dr. Emoto has conducted another interesting experiment. He placed rice into three glass beakers and covered it with water. And then every day for a month, he said, thank you to one beaker. You're an idiot to the second. And the third one, he completely ignored. After one month, the rice that had been thanked began to ferment, giving off a strong, pleasant aroma. The rice in the second beaker turned black. And the rice that was ignored began to rot. Dr. Emoto thinks that this experiment provides an important lesson. Dr. Emoto presumes that serious crimes are committed most of all in areas where people curse the most often. Idiot. I hate you. Laboratory containers of water were inscribed with hieroglyphs denoting words and the names of well-known people. Love, hope, soul, Mother Teresa, Hitler. In Moto Masaru's numerous experiments aimed at finding the word that cleanses water most powerfully 
have shown that it is not just one word, but a combination of two. Love and gratitude. Okay, so can anybody tell me, according to that, why do we make brachot on water? When you thank it and your gratitude, you make it into the best form, taste the best. That's why. We pray over our water. Is that a video we can find on YouTube when you're on? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's it called? Just search under Dr. Moto, Dr. Moto, and you'll, you'll find it. Yeah, he's famous. So that's what happens. You change the um, molecular structure of this water, and it becomes nurturing. And people who don't are not getting the benefit of this water that they're supposed to. That's Kavanah, right? That's Kavanah. That's, that's the whole point of having Kavanah during the Tefillah. So it's not only a, a hocus pocus thing, you know, which, oh, you have to do it because you have to do it, but rather there are there there is understanding why we want to do it in order because it benefits us. A lot of people think we're doing it for Hashem. Thank you, Hashem. Thank you. Uh, why do I have to give up thanking Hashem for this? Hashem doesn't need your thanks. But he wants the best for you. He wants you to get the spiritual nourishment from that water, from the food that you need, by changing it molecularly, by making the right type of blessing over it. So but, now, one second. I just want to finish on that. We have a few questions. I'll show you another clip. This clip is 1 minute and 39 seconds. So watch out. It's very quick. Now, the reason why I'm bringing from non-Jews, because the Gemara tells us, Chochma Bagoim Tami. Then when the Goyim, scientists and, and, and physicists and whatever, mathematicians, when they tell you something and they prove it mathematically, believe them, they know what they're talking about. And to say it's nonsense, it's, it's non-Jewish, it's not our ways, that's complete nonsense. Because we believe in Gematrot, the Gemara is full of science and everything, we also believe in that. Okay? So if they find something proven scientifically, believe them and understand how that fits back into the Torah. And we are talking about a minute ago about positive thoughts. I'm going to show you a clip which is probably going to change your life. This clip is of a woman who has a tumor the size like this in her stomach. Okay? Now, in this hospital, it was a Chinese hospital, what they did is that they, they had a CAT scan, or I don't know what this is, a type of scan Sonogram. Sonogram, where they, they saw on the screen the tumor, and then they froze the picture, okay, to the left side. And on the right-hand side was an actual picture of the tumor. Okay, so do you understand what I'm talking about? There was one frozen picture of what before happened, and then what's going to happen as the practitioners are having positive thoughts on her. That's it. Positive thoughts. And look what happens to this. The most extraordinary thing. So over here, okay, can you see this? It's a little bit hard to see this one, but I want to show you this. Remember, it's only an, a minute and a half. This is her stomach, and this is the tumor. This is a, this is a, 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 scat, a CAT scan, okay? This is the tumor, and this is her stomach. Now, it's going to be in Chinese. So anybody understand Chinese? <laughs> anybody can translate? Jack? No. No. Okay, so there are, there, are, there are translations here, okay? So just, just listen to this. It's only in Chinese, so just read the captions. This is the, the real, this is just a photo. Oh, 
Okay, did you see that? So, all the, the point is the power, the power of tefillah. <coughs> These are not, you don't have to be Jewish. Non-Jews also pray. And you see the effects over here. Of just pure praying. It's vibrations. it's vibrations, and that's how they cured her. The, the, the positive thought of just this is going to happen with a complete commitment and attitude that this is going to happen, they cured this patient of cancer. So, why would anybody go to a doctor? Why would anybody? Because not everybody believes in this. Yeah. I'm saying, like. Are you on this level that you can just put yourself, let's see, I'm not going to. Well, you don't know. There's the answer. But can anybody do that? Anybody no, I'm can do it. I'm not saying that I believe in it, but do you believe in it? Like, what do you do? You believe in it and not go to death? I just saw this in front of my eyes. This is not a trickery. This has been. No, I'm, I'm saying like, based on this, you wouldn't go to a doctor or something. You can hear. It depends on your level of the moon. Every time. You truly believe you can hear. That's right. So if you don't understand. So if you don't, if, I'm not saying to do crazy stuff. Jump off the mountain, and believe in Hashem that He's going to work for you. Well, if you believe that, maybe you will. Yeah, maybe you will. Miracles, That's right, you can't rely on miracles. So Wait. we'll do what we have to do with the doctors, but we see as well that's not a contradiction for praying. We always do that. What I'm just trying to demonstrate over here is that praying is just not, please do it for me. You're in charge of your future. You're in charge of your health being. You're in charge of your success. Nobody else. You fail. It's you that's failing. Don't believe it on Hashem. Hashem give it, has given you the power as we demonstrated over here, use that power to change your reality for the better. And all you got to do is pray, but really pray, and believe that it was going to happen, and it will. Yeah, but God doesn't always say yes. But this has nothing to do with God. You never know what he's saying. Yes. No. Hashem God gives you free choice. It doesn't make a difference. Sometimes it's a decree, and you can't change that. That's true. That's true as well. But doesn't doesn't stop us from, from practicing this. You know, by saying that it's a decree, it's not going to work. I wouldn't think like that. I would think that everything can work. Okay, that's the free choice. Okay, if you start thinking that there's a decree on me, it's not going to change. Well, it will never change. Okay, you never know. Rabbi, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You can't Rabbi, you don't that. think he had some energy with his hands as well? That's what we're doing. Yeah, that's all part of it. You know, but by vibration, the vibe. We spoke about it. The vibration of his mouth, the vibration of his thoughts. Right. You are so cured. You are cured. It changes the reality of that lady to make her in a situation where she is completely cured. Right. I have a question. You'll ask yes. him, does it matter even if you don't understand? Like, if you're saying to him and you don't understand the words, like, it's what if it's your, it's your, it's your, it's your job someone saying Chinese without understanding? It's your positive yeah. thoughts that make it work. So you just think positively and, and say any you know, and say like, the, the words. Those are special words. Our great rabbis knew exactly which which words did everything in the spiritual world, so we're relying on them, but they need our association, they need our participation by having that positive and being so assured that's going to happen that it is as if it happens. So you can think positively without thinking what these words mean. No problem. Okay, so thank you very much for joining us, and I hope this was informative. And uh, if you... Huh? Is it, is it? No, it's the ice cream time, is it? <laughs> okay.